Every single sheep breed you know, Merino, Suffolk, Dorset, Texel, they all trace back to one wild ancestor, the mouflon. Without this animal, there would be no wool sweaters, no lamb chops, and no flocks grazing in pastures around the world. This is the sheep before sheep, the original blueprint that started it all. Mouflon sheep are more than just another wild animal. They're living history. Scientists believe the mouflon is the ancestor of all domestic sheep, the very beginning of the journey that gave us over a thousand breeds today. You can still find them roaming the mountains of Europe, the Middle East, and islands like Sardinia and Corsica. With their reddish-brown coats and impressive curved horns, they look nothing like the fluffy farm sheep we're used to. But here's the exciting part. Every trait in modern sheep, from soft merino wool to the heavy muscles of a texel, can be traced back to the mouflon. Understanding them is like opening the first chapter in the story of livestock. Genetically, the mouflon is considered the wild ancestor of all domestic sheep, or Ovis Aries. Around 8,000 to 10,000 years ago, early farmers in the Fertile Crescent, the region that includes parts of modern Iraq, Turkey, and Iran, began taming these wild sheep. At first, humans valued them mostly for meat, hides, and bones. But as farming advanced, people started selecting traits like softer wool, calmer temperaments, and better lambing rates. Over time, this careful selection reshaped the mouflon into animals better suited for life alongside humans. To put it in perspective, when you see a merino sheep producing fine wool, or a Suffolk sheep bred for meat, you're looking at a living legacy that began with the mouflon. Without that ancient link, our modern sheep industry simply wouldn't exist. Now let's compare the mouflon directly with the sheep we know today. At first glance, the differences are clear. The mouflon is lean, muscular, and built for survival in rocky mountains. Rams carry massive curved horns, and their reddish coats blend perfectly with their surroundings. They shed their wool naturally, which means no shearing is needed. Now look at a primitive domestic breed, like the Soy sheep of Scotland. Soys still have a wild look, smaller bodies, hardy nature, and sometimes even horns. But compared to Mouflon, they're already more manageable and better suited to farming. Finally, take a modern breed like the Texel from the Netherlands. These sheep are heavy, woolly, and bred almost entirely for meat. Their bodies are stocky and powerful, but without the agility and survival traits of the mouflon. When you line them up side by side, you can see the entire story of sheep domestication in one picture. From wild survivor to primitive farm animal to specialized modern livestock. When humans first began domesticating mouflon, not every trait was useful on the farm. Over thousands of years, people selectively bred sheep to keep certain qualities and remove others. So what traits did we keep? Wool quality and quantity. Mouflon shed their coats naturally, but early farmers noticed some individuals had thicker, softer fibers. Over generations, this became the foundation for wool breeds like Merino. Docility, wild mouflon are alert and skittish. Farmers chose calmer animals that could live safely in flocks without constant escape attempts. Lambing rates, in the wild, a ewe might only raise one lamb successfully. Domestic sheep were bred to produce twins or even triplets, increasing flock productivity. Body size, the lean frame of the mouflon, was replaced by sheep with larger, meatier bodies to provide more food. And what traits were bred out? 
Wariness and agility, skills that helped Mouflon survive predators, weren't needed under human care. Horns. While impressive in Mouflon rams, horns were dangerous in crowded flocks. Many modern breeds have been bred to be polled or hornless. Natural camouflage. The reddish-brown coat of Mouflon blends with mountainsides, but farmers preferred white wool that was easier to dye and shear in large amounts. The result? A complete transformation. The modern sheep is almost unrecognizable compared to its wild ancestor, shaped not by nature, but by human needs. But here's a question worth asking. If humans had to start domesticating sheep today, would we still choose the mouflon? Back then, the mouflon was available, abundant, and already lived close to early human settlements in the Fertile Crescent. It wasn't the perfect candidate. It was skittish, hard to handle, and not very woolly, but it was there. If we looked around today with modern knowledge, we might make different choices. For example, wild Argali sheep in Central Asia are much larger and produce more meat. The bighorn sheep of North America are powerful and resilient in tough environments. Or we might even turn to goats, which are incredibly hardy and thrive in dry regions where sheep struggle. So maybe the mouflon wasn't chosen because it was the best option, but because it was the most practical one for the people of the time. And from that practical choice, humans built an entire global livestock industry. From the wild mountains of the Middle East to pastures around the world, the mouflon's legacy lives on in every sheep breed we know today. Whether it's a fine wool merino, a hardy Jacob, or a heavy Texel, all of them carry the blueprint written by the Mouflon thousands of years ago. The Mouflon reminds us that every farm animal has a wild origin, a starting point shaped by nature, and then reshaped by human hands. Without this one species, there would be no wool industry, no global lamb market, and no flocks grazing peacefully in our fields. So here's the question for you. If you, if you were living 10,000 years ago and had the chance to domesticate any wild animal, would you have chosen the mouflon? Or would you have looked elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey into livestock history, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more livestock insights.